It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tally here. Today I'll be reacting to a trailer that's called Everything's Gonna Be All White. Now this trailer was produced by Showtime for their upcoming TV show, and honest to God, it's probably like the most racist trailer for a TV show that I have seen. And so without further hesitation, let's respond to the various bits of the trailer and get my personal reactions to all of it. I think what annoys me most about white people is when they pretend like they're the victim. <laughs> What's also annoying is when they, you know, when they kill us. I really just love her comments right here. Well, you see, white people love to play the victim, except for when they try to kill us. This right here is a prime example of collectivism. More or less trying to group people together by the actions of a few people. Look, guys, I'm pretty sure if they said the exact same thing about black people, like, you know, well, you see, black people are lazy and stupid and ignorant, love to have the watermelon, all that kind of stuff. If they were to do the exact same sort of stuff that they're doing in this trailer for white people, do you guys honestly think that there would not be some sort of pushback? There would be some sort of pushback because it's generalizing an entire group of people based upon the actions of a few, or projecting their own personal ignorance towards other people. Now, it's true that there are some white people who kill black people. That is true. That is some cases, yes. But generally, I don't think that most people who are white are just out to just get white people. That's, I mean, that to me does not make any sense because it's fear mongering that somehow black people are somehow, you know, the victims of everything. But no, I don't think every single white person is out to get black people or, you know, every single white person, you know, want to just play victim. Because sometimes, in some cases, there are white people who are victims of crimes. And so it's just all of this sort of stuff that you just said right now makes no sort of sense to me. What is fragile about whiteness when everything has been constructed around it? By the way, guys, oh my god. When that guy was referring to whiteness, it was a reference towards, like, white supremacy. And more or less, he is trying to say that the United States was founded on white supremacy. I mean, to a certain extent, I would say that is true. Because the founding fathers, many of them, when they founded the country, owned slaves. And then, of course, they continued the slavery until the Civil War. And then after the Civil War, of course, there was still, like, the segregated buildings for African Americans. Even back then, there was also, you know, discrimination against the Native people, discrimination against Asian people, the Chinese, you know, workers in California, as well as the Japanese, you know, concentration camps, too. And so, I would say, yes, in the past, the United States was founded on this sort of white supremacy stuff. However, during like the 50s and the 60s with the Civil Rights Movement, many activists have fought for equal treatment for all minorities in the countries, and not just, you know, the black people. And so, after the course, like the passing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, it was actually, you know, illegal to, you know, discriminate people based entirely off their race, or their gender or their sex. And so companies began to, you know, employ people based entirely on their meritocracy, rather, of course, than, you know, not hire them because of their skin color. And so it's kind of sad to me how people like Joe Biden want to erase this sort of stuff for meritocracy when he pushed the idea of equity, which more or less is the idea of equality of outcomes wider than equality of opportunity. And so, in a sense, I feel as though that the United States is actually reversing back because of policies that's been implemented for many companies to have equities, quote unquote, in the various parts of the workspace. And so, to me, there's nothing holding people back from actually achieving, you know, their goal, even though, you know, the country was, you know, founded on white supremacy. Are there various types of racial disparities? Sure, both historically and also, you know, other factors to also, you know, be contribute. 
Like, for example, the breaking of the family of, like, the black family is also a big issue. And, of course, the various environments that people face. However, I don't think just because past actions happened in the past, therefore mean that you're forever a victim and can actually work to actually find your goals in life if you wish to. Every part of who I am has been distorted or criminalized. I don't think just because somebody is a Muslim means that their life is actually criminalized in the United States. Because the First Amendment, besides protecting free speech, also protects the ideas of freedom of religion. And so that means that anybody, regardless of the faith or the lack thereof, can practice or not practice any kind of religion that they're one to. Now, the main difference between United States and Islamic, um, you know, country is the fact that we don't center our laws based entirely off of theocracy. That means that we do not follow the Quran by the letter in the United States in comparison to like those Muslim countries that do in fact follow the Quran by the letter. Whereas, of course, you cannot, you know, kill somebody if they were to leave the religion and so on and so forth. And so, honestly, because of the laws in place that protects, you know, murder and stuff, you know, we cannot have any sort of apostasy, whatever. I think, in a sense, our system is way better than those, you know, religious theocracy. But that's just me. It's really just a bunch of white lies. <laughs> we're storming the Capitol! You're not patriots. You're ridiculous. Oh yes, every single white person must be a Trump supporter and they want to storm the Capitol. You see, it's not as if, of course, you know, people, you know, are, you know, their own personal individuals, you know, are responsible for their own actions. You know, in the more recent data that was done by Pew Research, race relationships actually has gone down since 2012. That means, of course, like many people think that the relationship between black people and white people in this country has gone to shit. And so, when you try to generalize all white people as this, or all white people as that, do you honestly think that this actually makes situations better for the two communities in the countries? Because if you continue to just push and push and push this idea that all white people should feel guilty by the actions of the few, you honestly are driving tensions to become way worse than they actually are right now. One of the definitions of American whiteness is ignorance. White people, we are not your problem. You are. Should white people today feel any responsibility for slavery? <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh my god. Ugh. This video is like so hard to get through. Now, they said, of course, that white people should feel, all white people should just feel bad because of the past actions of the colonizers. And again, it goes back to this sort of argument about the sons of the fodder. Look, they were like, you know, colonizers in all parts of the world. And it's not, yet, not you know, just white people who are actually the colonizers during that time period. Before the colonizations of the Americas that we know as North America, Central America, and South America, there were also the Europeans that were also conquering each other. And so the French would conquer the English, the English would conquer the French, and vice versa. And also, the modern day Arabia that we know today was actually conquered by the Muslims. African tribes have conquered each other throughout history. And like, of course, the many Asian countries also colonized each other too. And so, everybody at some point was guilty of colonizations. And because all humans at some point have colonized each other, said every single last human that is alive today should somehow feel guilty of the past actions of their ancestors. To which I would say no. No one should feel guilty based upon the actions of your ancestors or because somebody just happens to share the exact same skin color like you. White Jesus or black Jesus? Jesus was not white. Think of geography. Ain't no way Jesus walked around with blonde hair and blue eyes. Oh yes, this argument about whether or not Jesus was black or white 
To which I say, who really cares? Who really cares? Personally, of course, I'm not Christian, so I don't really care about whether the skin color is like, you know, black or white. But I do know for a fact that a historical Jesus do in fact exist based entirely off, you know, the scholarly work of the religious and also secular people. And of course, the secular Jesus did in fact exist. Do I honestly believe that Jesus was the Son of God and performed miracles? No. But I know for a fact that Jesus as a person did in fact exist. It's the same thing for Muhammad too. Like I have no doubts that a historical Muhammad existed or that a historical Buddha also existed. And so there had to be some sort of prophet for like a lot of religions for it to actually, you know, jumpstart to begin with. What I can say, however, is that of course like Jesus was of course born in the Middle East. And so Jesus himself might have been of course Middle Easterner from what I can tell so far, based upon like the location on which he was born, which was like Jerusalem. And so he would probably be like in modern day, like, you know, Israel, if I'm not mistaken. So honestly, there are some people who think that because someone has like a darker skin tone than you, automatically that person is black. I'm not even joking. Some people think that everything is black. They think that Native Americans are just somehow black. They think that like the Native Hawaiians are also black. Any sort of thing that have, you know, quote unquote black features, they think that somehow it's automatically black. If you guys do not believe me, there's like a whole entire documentary that was called Hidden Colors, which goes into like a lot of details about this sort of conspiracy theories that everyone was black and that black people are kings and queens. And so I'm thinking for a single second right now that this whole entire argument about whether or not Jesus was black or not comes from that mindset. White culture fears the end of the world. For us as native people, the end of the world already happened like multiple times. When, he's, when that person was talking about how white people believe in the end of the world, I think he's referring to the people who believe in the ideas of the white genocide as well as the ideas of the Great Replacement. Now, the Great Replacement was like, you know, an idea, I think, that started in France where more or less, like, a lot of Europeans have this sort of fear that immigrants might overpopulate, you know, the white population and that the white people will become minorities in their own countries. And the idea, again, like, for white genocide is the same idea where more or less there are groups of people that want to kill off the white race. Now, honestly, I'm not sure if these ideas are true or not. But I know for a fact that in African countries, that white people in those places, particularly the farmers, are being targeted for their race. And of course, they are trying to kill off the white farmers in those places. And so, honestly, like, again, there are a few people who might believe that sort of ideas. But again, not every single white person believe in the idea of a white genocide or the Great Replacement. And so, yes, I do in fact agree that what happened to the native tribe was also, you know, really terrible in the United States. But at the same time, I don't think, of course, like, you know, fighting fire with fire is also the right answer. Symbols and monuments, these are mementos of racism. Bring that statue down. What about TCBY yogurt or something? Everybody can get behind. <laughs> When it comes down to the statues and the monuments, I think it's very important to preserve history. We can learn a lot from history by not trying to repeat the actions of what the stuff that people committed in the past. And so I think a perfect compromise for those kind of statues that are used with like the taxpayer money is to put those statues in a museum to you know, learn about what the history of the Confederacy and what happened during that time period. I don't think destroying the statues is actually a good thing because like I said earlier, those kind of statues could actually, you know, be really good for historical museums to for people to know like what happened in the past and to study more about the people that were behind the Confederacy. The truth has to be told about history. We have to make sure that these stories are told from our perspective. There's always hope, you know what I'm saying? We don't give up. It's about obliterating systemic and institutionalized racism. 
If these people want to end, oh my god, if these people want to end institutionalized racism, like they're doing a very terrible job, if you were to ask me. Because right now the Supreme Court is having a hearing on the discrimination of Asian students in college campuses like in Harvard. Now the main reason why they're having this sort of Supreme Court case was the fact that for SAT scores what they would do is that they would reduce the scores of the white students and the Asians to add some more SAT points to the black students. That of course is like the definition of racism. And so there's also examples of again, like I said earlier, of Joe Biden wanting to apply the idea of equity across like the government. Again, judging people and hiring people solely based upon their race, I would say that's also bigotry of low expectations. And of course the various, you know, universities that have their own personal black spaces, which again goes against the idea of the people like Martin Luther King who you know fought against the idea of separate but equal and so I think those kind of examples of institutionalized racism is actually making a comeback because of the ideas of the activists sure like a lot of them might have some sort of good intentions behind what they're doing with their activism but the way that they're doing it and the ideas that they have actually adds more to the racial tensions. Like I said earlier, the Pew data shows that racial tensions have been on the decline since 2012. And so by implementing these ideas of equity, by of course trying to deduct the points of the SAT scores of the Asians to black people, you're actually you know, being more racist towards minorities than ever before. And so if you guys want to end institutionalized racism, Stop doing these type of policies in the first place. This is a wild place, y'all. It's a wild place. I know Harriet and Frederick be up there just like, what is they going to do? And there you have it. That was the whole entire trailer for that whole TV show. And like I said earlier, this was probably like the most condescending, most racist thing I ever seen against an entire group of people in this country. Imagine if they would do the exact same sort of thing against black people, against Asian people, or whatever group of people solely based entirely on their skin color. And so, what do you guys think about this trailer? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.